All right, Amanda, thank you very much. It seems like people who work along the lakes here can't <laughs> seem to catch a break no. because today's cooler temperatures and the rain, not exactly what those businesses on Ladybird Lake and the fans of the lake were hoping for. It was 21 or 22 days, so it was a little bit longer. This is the highest that Mansfield Dam has been, uh, or the Lake Travis has been since I've owned the club. So we're talking about two months of bad weather right now. First, we saw the back-to-back -back weekends filled with heavy rain. Then the flooding brought it with it a waterway ban. Mm -hmm. There is some good news, though. Part of the ban has been lifted, and you can now head back out to certain parts of the water, at least. Candy Rodriguez joining us live this morning near Ladybird Lake to tell us all about it. Good morning, Candy. John and Zelly, good morning. Yes, they got that news yesterday. Business owners telling me they are ready to get back to work and get those rowers back in the water. Texas UT's Texas crew rowers out here this morning actually ready to hit the water for the first time in a couple of weeks. But with that cold front, we're expecting to see business owners tell me when the temperatures drop, so does business, which would be just another hit to their already impacted bottom line. It was very quiet here. We were underwater. For three weeks, these life jackets hung dry, paddle boards stacked up, and supplies stored. But on Wednesday, it was a different story. Yeah, there was an email blast from the rowing center that, that the lake is open for rowing again. TJ Milling showed up within 30 minutes of getting the email. He's been coming here to the Texas Rowing Center every day for the past six years and doesn't recall a lake closure lasting this long. Yeah, I mean, the, the trail and the lake is its own business community, too. So, I mean, when you suddenly shut all that down, it's got to be a real hardship for the businesses that depend on it. It's a challenge businesses face that can quickly add up. Cost of this flood, we probably lost a, between sixty and eighty thousand dollars of business. Although that's a big chunk of change, business owner Matt Nifton says it doesn't compare to what could have been. You know, the, the flood in 20. 16, which was the first 15 days of June, we lost about 200,000. Matt remains positive and says it's simply the cost of doing business along the lake. You know, you, you, you have to expect that some of this is going to happen. It'd be great if it didn't, but it will. Matt tells me they saw about 100 rowers come through yesterday, but just to give you some perspective, on average during a hot summer weekend day, they could see thousands of people, whereas this month and last month, October and November, are their slowest months, so they only see about a couple hundred on a weekend day. But take a look at Lady Bird Lake this morning. A section of it still remains closed from Redbud Trail upstream to Tom Miller Dam. It is expected to reopen by tomorrow along with parts of Lake Austin and the Colorado River and all of Lakes LBJ and Marble Falls. A little hard to see this morning, but there is improvement. Keep in mind, though, if you plan to head out, there is still visible debris and you'll have to be a little extra careful. Guys, back to you. Okay, Candy, thank you. We also heard from Zilker Park. The boat rentals over there wanted to know how are they doing. The owner tells us business was bad the entire month of October, and that's because of the location on Zilker Park. You know, when ACL is in town, people have a problem getting to them. So it cuts down the numbers of a couple of hundred people on any given weekend a day to about 30 people. So that's a huge blow to their business. Uh, they say that they will only allow visitors in its Barton Creek area because the water on Lady Bird Lake is still running way too quickly.